Oklahoma began with his father, Derek, an undersized walk-on turned team captain of the 1985 Sooner National title team. After a five-year NFL career and a Super Bowl win, Derek would return to Oklahoma as a graduate assistant. We were sitting around the table and my mom walks over and you know, her face, um, I could tell she was coming to tell us some bad news. She gave the phone to my mom and um, my mom answered the phone and you know, with after a few seconds of talking on the phone, she just burst it out in like a really loud scream and it could be a scream that I'd never forget. Derek Shepard died of sudden heart failure at age 35. His son Sterling was six years old. And the Oklahoma staff embraced Sterling. They became his second family. For the next eight years, he was included in team practices and home games. But by high school, the visits would have to stop. Sterling was coming into his own as a football player, and the Sooners had their eye on him. His junior year came around, and there's more and more people now paying attention to him. And, and then more of my coaches started to notice it, what I was noticing maybe the year before. And then fortunately, we were all in agreement that he's a guy we need to have on the team. I was quick to commit there. There was no other place where I wanted to be. Wearing his father's number and playing his father's position, Sterling became an all Big 12 wide receiver for the Sooners. And at Sterling's final home game, his father's teammate, Brian Bosworth, presented him with a magazine bearing Derek's image, signed by his teammates from the 1985 championship team. You stood up proud for us. We're going to stand up proud for you. So. And he would be so proud of me. To see what your son's accomplished and see the point that I'm at right now, I don't think you can help but be happy. Thomas had him covered, gave up on the play, and Shepard stayed with it, gain of 24. And the ball was late. He was. The Giants knew they had a good thing when they took Sterling Shepard in the second round of the draft in April, and even called him a young Victor Cruz. But after the way he started minicamp this week, they're talking about him as if he's the new Odell Beckham, too. Uh, he can run routes, 
he can catch, he, he pretty much can do it all. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to you know seeing him develop. I just feel like I, I, I really know what he's capable of, and I just I'd rather let him just shock shock the world, you know, than, than spill his secrets. Sterling, in all seriousness, uh, is a young man that. Uh, has demonstrated a, a suddenness, an explosiveness, an ability to make contested catches, to separate from defenders. And something else that's jumped out is, you know, we've thrown an awful lot at him. And as we've gone through the later OTAs and through the mini camp, we're giving him more uh, repetitions with Eli and holding him to a high standard. And the thing is, he's, he's a rookie, he's making mistakes, but he doesn't make a lot of the same mistakes. He, he tends to, to be a, a quick study, and, and so I think uh, I'm excited about where he's headed and, and glad that he's here. Second and five, Manning, Chase throws, and the guy. First and ten, the 20-yard line. Shepard for your Giants insider. Shep, you're part of a very talented wide receiver group on this team, but it also seems like there's a lot of camaraderie with you guys, too. I mean, describe what you've got going on there. I mean, I think that kind of formed throughout camp, just being with each other every day, uh, you know, getting everybody's different personalities together. Uh, you know, it just kind of drew us together. I mean, we're, we're, we're a tight group of guys. Uh, it kind of reminds me of my senior year of college with some of those guys. Um, but yeah, we, we're, we're like brothers. Second down. 